at uh, the next session, which will be a practical demonstration of the Rapid Eye Vitrification Kit. Uh, my name is Jacques Blanche, I'm the Visual Life Academy Manager. Um, so, I'm going to demonstrate, uh, before we start, a little bit about the Rapid Eye. It's a closed vitrification system, and in the Rapid Eye system, we are not exposing our embryos uh, to liquid nitrogen at all. They are being vitrified in pre cooled air. Um, so, from a safety aspect, it's really good for the embryos as well. There's three aspects that I would like to start off explaining. I will talk about the media, I will talk about the device, and then I will talk about the smart box and the container that we use for the notification itself. A few critical points that regardless of the device or the system that you are using for notification that you will always have to remember is uh, using people that are properly trained to do notification for. You need to have um, uh, the correct volumes that's prescribed in the protocol, you have to follow the protocol uh, exactly how it was written, and you need to be careful about the volumes that you're using and the temperature. And I'll explain each of those as we go through. So, first of all, uh, for today's demonstration, I'm going to talk about our Blastasis notification kit. We have stage specific uh, solutions, Blastasis oversight and on cleavage stages. Um, but we also have an only solution for all stages of development. So depending on the type of program that you're running, you may want to use a stage specific kit or your system. All of our solutions uh, contains a MOPS buffer. Now very importantly, because of that, you can never place your solutions inside a incubator with CO2. You need to warm it up to 37 degrees outside of the incubator on the heated stage or in an incubator without CO2. Very important to remember that part. The cryo protectants we use is the propanol diol and ethylene glycol, and we also use sucrose as a non-permeating uh, cryo protectant. Um, we've done loads of studies, and we get really good results using the combination of propanol diol and ethylene glycol, so we know it works. Um, the other very interesting component in all of our vitrification solutions is hydrobromine. And from the studies and the work that uh, David Gardner has done many, many years now, uh, we've seen that, that hyaluronin has cryoprotective properties and it can actually protect your embryo uh, during the, the steps that you do for vitrification. So that's why we also have hyaluronin in all of our media. As I said to you before, we work at 37 degrees Celsius. And the reason we work at 37 degrees Celsius is we want to make sure we maintain that temperature of embryo culture and handling the embryos outside of the um, incubator as well. So uh, it's a more physiological temperature. But what we gain with that is that at a higher temperature, you also find that the metabolic processes happen faster. And in that way, we are able to finish the vitrification process in a much quicker way at a higher temperature. Very important to remember is that when you set up to use the system, you should never uh, go above 37 degrees Celsius. So make sure that you are carefully monitoring the heated stages so that you measure 37 degrees Celsius or less in the media, in the dish, not on the heated stage. That's very important to remember. Um, as soon as you go above 37 degrees Celsius, you will run the risk that they can be damaged by the cryoprotectants on the embryos. And just the higher temperature itself will also cause damage on the embryos. So, rather a little bit below 37 than going below 37. We use, um, because of the larger, uh, sorry, because of the higher temperature we use, we make use of larger volumes. So typically between 0.5 and 1 ml of media that we would add pot in our dishes. Um, one of the dishes that we recommend to use is our 5 well dish. The 5 well dish, as with all the other square dishes that we have in the vitrolite range, are in direct contact with the heated surface and in that way we are able to maintain the temperature a lot better. Because of the column of media that you create, it's also much easier to maintain the 37 degrees Celsius. And don't deviate from these volumes, because if you start working in micro droplets, that volume will cool down a lot quicker, uh, it will evaporate a lot quicker, and therefore the osmolality will change. So the volumes have been decided based on the protocol that we've worked with, and uh, that's what we should adhere to. People ask, how long does it take to warm up the media? Uh, I don't have the right answer for you, because every person in every lab should validate it 
on that specific map because everybody's um, uh, equipment is different, their uh, atmospheric temperature is different in the lab, the, the countries where they are in is different, so therefore validate your own laboratory. Do a test run, uh, measure it every two minutes, and then you'll see when you reach 37 degrees Celsius in your laboratory with your equipment, that's how long you test. Um, another important thing about that media is also once you've reached 37 degrees Celsius, it's important that you use the dish immediately. Don't leave it there for another half an hour before you start using it, because the longer it stays on the heated stage, the more evaporation will take place and osmolality will start changing. So as soon as you reach 37, go ahead and use the dish. Um, with, because we have the larger volume, uh, we also have the capability of handling more than one uh, embryo or one load cycle with one dish. Um, so we typically advise that you should you, you can do up to four loading cycles of the rapid eye from one dish. When you have more embryos, you should create additional dishes. But you can do at least four. If you're going to vitrify one embryo per straw, you can do four embryos on four straws for one dish. Um, if you have more, then obviously you have more. Um, one of the other questions raised as well is how many embryos can I load on the rapid eye? Now, that depends on your embryo transfer policy. If you can only transfer one embryo, then you are probably going to just load one embryo. Because if you can only transfer one and you've loaded two and you warm them and both survive, then you have additional embryo that you either have to re so it doesn't make sense. So follow your uh, transfer policy based on that. When it comes to oocytes, uh, it comes down to your capability to handle more than one uh, oocyte at a time. And typically, we recommend three oocytes on one rapid eye. Um, we, have, we do see clinics that are very proficient. They can do maybe up to four, but I would say three oocytes is typically what we can use. Okay. The next thing I want to explain to you is about the actual device, the rapid eye, for those of you who haven't seen it before. They are individually packaged, um, and when you open up the package, there's two parts to it. There's the straw itself, and then there is the rapid eye stick, and I'll explain each of these to you. The first one you see here on the screen is the actual rapid eye. Um, the one end is a clear end with a hole inside it, and the other end has a black dot inside it. So the clear end is where we will work with the embryo, that's where we will load the embryo. Now, one of the benefits of the system is the fact that your embryo or oocytes never comes in contact with a physical surface. You load it inside the hole and it stays in position by surface tension. So it's a benefit in the fact that it can't get stuck to a, a different type of material, which we know that sometimes can happen in, in other carriers. Um, the volume of the hole is 30 nanometers. You don't have to measure how much is 30 nanometers, you just need to fill the hole. Um, we have a very good uh, uh, e-learning program uh, that you can get access to free of charge on our website and we go through all the steps um, very carefully and we'll talk there also about underfilling and overfilling of the hole and we want to make sure the hole is completely filled. What that helps with... Uh, um, we'll get that back in a second. Um, we want to make sure that you fill the hole because if everybody does it exactly the same, you have uh, better reproducibility and you will have much better uh, the same results going forward. Um, apart from the rapid eye itself, you also then have the straw. So the straws come in, in different colors, uh, so color coding to make it uh, a bit easier. You have two black dots uh, or black marks uh, on the straw itself. And it's typically where you will do the labeling, either writing on the straw itself or doing an electronic label. Um, at the bottom of the straw, there is a metal piece that is already incorporated, and that is to give the straw a bit of weight when it is inside your liquid nitrogen tank, but it doesn't float to the top. The other benefit of having the metal uh, rod incorporated in the straw is the fact that we have um, uh, magnets inside the box. So when you place it in position, uh, it'll hold the straw in a uh, nicely position. And I'll explain that to you when I talk about the smart box. Another part of the um, straw is the metal rod that we have that comes as part of the package. Um, first of all, you will eventually do the vitrification inside the straw. 
and we want to make sure that it's not bent or kinked. So by having the rod inside prevents that kinking from happening. The other and most important reason is when you work in your laboratory, there is water vapor in the air. And when you place it inside your smart box, um, that very cold temperature on the outside, um, if you then expose the inside of the straw to the atmospheric air, you could have condensation and liquid air forming on the inside. So during the process of vitrification or getting ready, you leave the metal rod inside. And then once you're ready for vitrification, you remove the rod and you perform the vitrification. But I'll explain that when I go through the actual protocol. Then last but not least is the smart box. This is our newest generation, it's called the smart box 3. Um, we've made a lot of improvements to it. Um, it's really uh, user-friendly and comfortable to use. And I'll go through the specific stages. First of all, we have a top lid, um, which is basically just to uh, avoid evaporation, so that you don't lose too much of the information. You will fill up your box, um, you will have your first insert, and then uh, the, the lid on top to make sure that the information doesn't uh, evaporate that quickly. The bottom lid is also designed to fit um, the, uh, the smart box and you will have five working stations where you can place the straws. And as I said before, um, you will have magnets on the inside of the box, I don't know if you can all see there. Um, we, you're welcome afterwards to also come and have a closer look at the equipment. Um, but that just makes handling a lot easier, that you can have it uh, positioned like that. And that's, once you fill the box, you'll make sure that your straw stays inside. Other features of the Smart Box 3 is the fact that we have um, it, we've made it smaller so that it's easier to use either inside the lambda flow hood or right next to you. So uh, it has a smaller footprint. Um, it has a large working capacity um, for when you have to afterwards place your cane inside to load the straws. So uh, easy visibility, it's all on one level, um, which makes working a lot easier and a lot safer. Um, it has a uh, pouring spout on one end, so once you're done with your procedure and you want to pour your liquid nitrogen back, um, you can simply take it by the handles and pour it back in. The handles is also positioned in such a way that obviously you will need to wear protective gear, uh, gloves, when you are working with a vitrification or the liquid nitrogen, and when you are holding it, uh, your hands are positioned at the, at, away from the spout so that it will not be poured onto your hands. Um, and then for those clinics who do use open systems where their embryos and straws are exposed to liquid nitrogen, once you have emptied the box, it's a very easy surface to clean. So wipe it down. Uh, obviously, if you use the rapid eye, there is never exposure to liquid nitrogen, so you don't have to disinfect in between the cases. So another great benefit of having an open system. So what I will do now is I will go through the actual protocol. Um, step by step, I'm not going to keep the timings because we're not working with embryos today. But I'm going to use glass beads just because they're much more visible on the screen and easier for you to see. So I've already prepared my vitrification dish um, with my media. Uh, just a quick recap, remember to validate in your own lab how long it will take you to reach 37 degrees Celsius in the media. And then because we have mops in our media, the pH is controlled. And because we work at 37 degrees Celsius, our temperature is controlled. Because we work in a large volume, the osmolality is controlled. So it's a very safe environment for your embryos. If you have, for instance, three or four embryos from one patient, you can move them all into the first solution at the same time. You don't have to go back and forth to the incubator every time you have to do a new embryo. So it's a safe environment to keep them in. And as I said, if, for instance, people do not use the picture life culture media that contains hyaluronin, this is a perfect opportunity for the embryos to get, get equilibrated with hyaluronin as well to protect the embryos. After an equilibration period of about five minutes, you can start the process and then you move the embryo from the first solution to the second solution. Some important aspects about moving your embryo. You have a change of concentration of the cryoprotectants as you go from one step to the next. And you want to make sure that you don't dilute that concentration. So that's another reason why we have a large volume, but also um, a practical aspect is to prime your pipette first with the solution that you'll be going into, then pick up your embryo with as little as possible media and then place it into the solution where you're going to. 
As soon as you enter the embryo into the next solution, take the pipette out and discard all the remaining media and then keep on working. Okay? So going from solution one to solution two. I'll quickly do that on the screen here. So I'm just going to pick up one of these last beads. Move it into solution two. So the second solution is uh, it has a two minute period for our uh, blastocyst and cleavage stage embryos. You can use a stage specifically for oocytes, um, that goes up to five minutes just because the oocytes are much more complex. You need to watch for uh, collapsing and re expansion of the oocytes. So for blastocysts, it's a set two minutes, providing that you keep the correct temperatures and the correct volumes. During those two minutes, you will uh, prepare your uh, rapid eye. I prefer to have a 60 millimeter dish next to me. It's a sterile surface where I can place my rapid eye and I know that the clear end, where, which I've shown to you on the screen before, where the embryos will be placed, is then inside the dish and I can easily move it around without knocking it off the table or anything like that. So just a nice way to prepare your dish. The other reason why we have this dish is that we will create two micro droplet dish, uh, two micro drops from our last solution, and that's where we will do the loading from. Many people ask, can I not just place the embryo straight into the third well? The problem is uh, that visibility becomes a problem. You have a large volume, and this is the step where your embryo really starts to uh, collapse, and visibility becomes much more difficult. The embryo starts to float to the surface, and it's really difficult to gauge. We recommend two 50 micro droplets, and in that smaller volume, uh, not as deep, it's much easier to keep track of the embryo, and also when you do the loading, when you hold the rapid eye next to the droplet, they're on the same front of the plane, so it makes visibility a lot easier, and handling also a lot easier. Of course, every time you do a load, you need to make two fresh droplets uh, of solution number three, and you only make those droplets right towards the end of the two minutes in the second solution. If you make them too early, they will start to evaporate because of the high temperature that we work at and because they are only micro droplets. So at this point we have obviously already placed our straw in the smart box. Um, the air inside the straw will cool down to 196 degrees, the same temperature as the liquid nitrogen. Uh, it's been labeled already, you've done your paperwork and now we can make our two uh, droplets from solution number three. So solution three will only serve as a reservoir from where you will pick up media to create your two droplets. Uh, the droplets will be too big to be visible on the screen. I've made them there. Okay, so what's involved in the next step? I'm going to, again, uh, Prime my pipette with solution number three, pick up my embryo from solution two with as little as possible media, move it into the first droplet, expel all the remaining media. Prime it from the second droplet, pick it up again, move it to the second droplet. So we want to make sure that the concentrations of cryoprotectants are more diluted and that the embryos are exposed to the correct concentration at that stage. And that's typically double from what it was before in the second solution. The the vitrification procedure for the timing of them blastocyst is between 30 seconds and 45 seconds. Now, a lot of people, when they first get introduced to vitrification, they feel that, wow, that's a very short period, however will I manage? Um, but it's like anything we do in IVF, it takes a little bit of practice, and what we've actually seen is when things become very proficient, they, they become too fast, and then the results start going down, because they put it into the third solution and they vitrify immediately. And the problem is the cryoprotectants actually doesn't have enough time in the liquid phase to enter the embryos and the cell membranes. So therefore, adhere to the 30 seconds to 45 seconds. Don't be too quick, because then you will have a problem with your results eventually. And we see that all the time. Um, the nice thing about our system, being a closed system, is the fact that you vitrify first and then you seal afterwards. 
So it's not fidgety that you have to seal and then eventually do the vitrification. Vitrification is immediately done and then we do the, uh, the sealing up. So I am going to uh, do the loading so you'll be able to see the glass bead going into the, the rapid eye. Um, if my fingers here um, are the, is the hole, we want to aim to touch the, the micro pipette on the inside um, of the hole. As soon as you touch it, you will find that the capillary forces of the pipette will start to pull the media inside the hole. And you just then have to continue pressing until you fill the hole completely. Um, what often happens is that people, when they are um, new at the rapid eye system, uh, they overfill the hole. There's too much media. And then they know, want to know, can they suck the media back up? Of course you can suck it back up. But my advice is to just keep on practicing that you actually put the right amount down on the first time. And the way to get that right is just your position of the embryo in the bed. If you have your embryo further back in the bed with a lot of media in front of it, it means you have to push out a lot of media, which means you're going to overfill it. If you can control your embryo as close as possible to the tip, you will not have this problem, and overfilling will not be a problem. Um, and then, yes, so we will uh, place the rapid eye in position, uh, in the hole. It's held in position by surface tension, and then uh, as soon as you vitrify it, it becomes a solid media. So I'm going to uh, demonstrate that to you here. So I prime my pipette first. Expelling the remaining media. Why my pipette on the second solution? Pick it up again and into the second solution. Now I've picked up my embryo, I try and keep it as close as possible to the tip. It doesn't have to be in the center of the hole as long as it is inside the hole. Uh, I'll try and show it to you there. So there's my embryo inside the hole. And then at that point, I will remove my metal rod. There's no compensation, there's no liquid air that's formed, and immediately drop the rapid eye inside. I mean, obviously, I'm explaining to you now, so it took a little bit longer, but you will still want to do that process as quickly as possible. As soon as you're in this position, your embryo is safe. It's vitrified. Everything's fine. Now we make use of an ultrasonic sealer. The sealer has a mouthpiece that fits over the top of the straw. And you will just hold it there in position, press it for four or five seconds, and you'll end up with a really nice seal. And now your vitrification has been done. Uh, we're ready. Uh, to either go to the next embryo, or if that's the only one you're going to do, you are ready to place it in your storage container, um, either carry the, uh, the smart box to where your uh, store is, or if it's right next to you. If you're using um, the canes and goblet system, or the, the, the cassettes, um, you have now the capability of entering it into a really nice large working area. You're not, there's no constraints in terms of size, so you lower it in, and then I'm going to take out this straw now, because here it's for demonstration purposes. Your embryo is sitting right here, and you will see we have the black line. And this is your warning line. When you work inside the box, you never want to have the black line surfacing above the level of liquid nitrogen, because that's when you run into a, a critical stage where the embryos can go above the liquid nitrogen and where they can then start warming up. 
because we work in such small volumes, we really want to make sure that we are always submerged in the production. So that's what the, black, the bottom black line is for. To warn you, always keep it above that. The production above that line. So when you place it inside your, obviously working inside the smart box, make sure that it's always done uh, under the level of production. And then from that point, we can um, move on and leave it into storage. But that's vitrification, very straightforward. I would say the most important thing to just remember is to practice the handling of your embryos and oocytes. Try and keep them as close as possible to the tip. That gives you much, much better control uh, on how you will be able to load the, the rapid eye. Um, remember that we work at 37 degrees Celsius. Remember to warm up your dishes according to your own validation. Never in a CO2 incubator because we work with mops in our solutions and adhere to the timings and the volumes. So now I'm going to cross over to the warming part. Now, if you thought the vitrification was easy, the warming is much, much easier than that. So similarly, I would have uh, prepared my warming dish uh, following the validation that I've done in my laboratory. I um, will identify the patient, the pain, and I will place in position under the level of nitrogen the straw of the patient that I will be using. Now this is now where the black dot on the other side of the rapid eye comes into play. Because above the top black line, you can now see the black dot of the rapid eye, and that's the, the, the end of it. So you want to now open up the straw without cutting through the rapid eye. And this is really important. If you cut the rapid eye, remember this uh, patient's embryos could have been in storage for weeks, months, years um, at a very cold temperature and they become very brittle and they're very, very hard. So if you cut through it, you can send a shockwave through the rapid eye which can damage the embryo. So rather be safe than sorry, cut a little bit higher than too low. You want to open up the system and again it's it's user-friendly because it doesn't matter how high you cut it, your embryo is always vitrified. It's not that you have to quickly rush because we've opened the system. Um, we use a, a circular cutter for that. It's just to create a nice round cut when we, uh, when we open up the straw. And we make use of a needle nose, twe a needle -nose tweezer to eventually grab hold of the rapid eye on the inside. So an easy way to prevent yourself from cutting through the rapid eye is just to place the tweezer at exactly the same height as the rapid eye. If you then lower the cutter over the top, it's impossible for you to actually cut through the rapid eye. So, I've now opened up my system. It's still vitrified. No rush, no pressure on the embryologist. I make sure that my dishes are in position, it's warmed up. I will then reach out and reach in with the needle nose tweezer to grab hold of the rapid eye. If at this point you realize that you didn't cut low enough and you can't reach it, then you just cut it again. So again, no harm done, user friendly. You only pick it up with the needle nose tweezer until you can reach it with your fingers. You, it's absolutely safe to reach it, uh, touch it with your fingers. Because of the plastic, there's no conductivity from the heat of your hand. It can affect the embryo. And also at this point, the embryo is still submerged under the, the level of the production. So it's absolutely safe to use. Your hands are just much better and you will have much better control if you move it with your fingers. And then at this point, in one very quick step, I would say one second or less, you have to go immediately into your first solution, warm solution. And if we've done the learning correctly, then we should see our, uh, our, uh, uh, our glass bead right there. And I'm just swirling it around. There. There's my glass bead. Okay. So even though we didn't actually use liquid nitrogen to turn it into a solid surface, it remained liquid the whole time while I was talking, and it was still there. And that just demonstrates how strong the reinforces and the, the surface tension is in that really small hole. Um, you know, it, I, I work quite roughly with it and it's still stayed inside the hole in the liquid state. And then from there you will follow the protocol from solution 1 to solution 2 and then eventually do solution 3. For the plasticist protocol, we do one minute in the first solution, three minutes in the second solution, 
and five to ten minutes in the last solution. Why five to ten in the last solution? If you, for instance, have to do two embryos, or maybe the first one didn't look that good, you can warm the second one and then wait in the last solution for the second one to catch up, and then you can transfer them back to your culture dish um, and then follow your protocol for post warming culture and embryo transfer. The um, Solutions, as I said before, for warming, uh, it contains sucrose as a non-permeating cryoprotectant, and that is starting at a higher concentration, going to a lower concentration, until finally in the last solution you don't have any sucrose. It is a similar solution where you have the exposure to hyaluronin um, uh, that prepares the embryo for the, the next step and to, to start growing again for the embryo. So that's it. Uh, easy and simple. Closed vitrification device, we've adapted the solutions, the smart box to so everything to fit together and to work together. And we have seen loads of publications. Please feel free to also uh, speak to my colleagues here at the, um, at the booth where you will have the station for vitrification. There's a leaflet that has a summary of all the latest results using uh, the rapid eye vitrification system and our solutions. Um, so, yeah, we know it works very well. Um, thank you for attending today. You have any questions? <laughs> Yes. Yes. I'll just uh, repeat the question. Uh, the lady asked, when you take out the rapid uh, eye from your straw, you don't have to use a pipette to take the embryo off the rapid eye. Not at all. Because the embryo, uh, if you've done a good load, you will have a good warm. And the embryo does not uh, it's not attached to any surface. It's suspended in solution. So as soon as the, the frozen or the vitrified uh, media becomes a liquid again, it just falls off. Obviously, you want to swirl it around to make sure that it comes away from the, from the rapid eye. And then as you take it out, make sure that you visualize it. Don't just put it in and take it out and then start looking for it. You always want to have visual control and make sure that it is, uh, that you can see it. Okay, thank you very much.